Well, we're finally working on our z-axis stepper mounts and just like with the x and the y axis a lot of the processes that we're going to be going through are the same so I've kind of just to speed things up I've kind of just fast forwarded through all these processes but I did want to get them on video so that you could see exactly what I was doing and how I got to the finished product um, so first we cut the stock length and then now I've just got it in the mill here and I'm cleaning, just cleaning up all the uh, edges. This is uh, 6061 aluminum and it's a 2 inch thick 4 inch by 4 inch block. You can see me here measuring it and now I'm getting it to the final dimension here uh, on the mill. Now, I'm pretty impressed with the Precision Matthews so far. Um, I've done quite a bit of manual machining and it seems to be working fine. Uh, I did blow a fuse at one point, but other than that, I haven't had any issues. Uh, you can see here, I'm running at about 600 RPMs and I'm taking a pretty aggressive cut here. This is about 60 to 80 thousandths and almost a full half inch width of cut. So it, it does a really good job. I'm pretty impressed with the overall performance. Uh, just as before, I'm using a permanent marker here just to color this in so that I can mark all my dimensions on the block. Um, I'm marking the three holes for the mounts to bolt it to the uh, column as well as the center one. Okay, so I'm busy trying to figure out how to lay this out and get it just right. Um, there's several different ways you can do this. We have to do our center hole and then our three mounting holes. Those are the critical holes uh, that we're going to be doing first. One way to do the, uh, lay this out is to take the actual bearing from the top of the z-axis and you can sit that on there and then just kind of mark through the mounting holes to make sure you got it perfect. But if you remember, we did a tracing. So what I did was I took a hole punch and punched out where the mounting holes were. And then I just, I knew that the distance from my drawing, I knew the distance between these holes. These are, this is an equilateral triangle. So each one of these are 60 degrees. And so I knew that from here to here was 60, um, 60, and 60. So what I did was I just measured down from the center, and that was 33.5 millimeters. And I set a one of my old calipers to 33.5, and then I just kind of scribed it. And scribed it and scribed it and that gave me my distance there and then I did I also knew that the distance between here and here was 58 millimeters so with that I just marked from the center line 58 and made a mark and then I went and took my tracing and laid it over here to see how close my measurements were and they were pretty good and so I just circled that in with a sharpie and then made sure rescribed my marks right in the center. And I think we're pretty good. So it's not too complicated, um, but it is a little tricky. You got to 
be a little bit more careful with this one. And uh, so now let's get out to the mill and we'll start machining these holes. Well, just as before, I've got a center drill here and I'm just going to center drill my hole and bore the hole for the mounting holes. Um, the reason I center drill and then change the bit out and put a drill bit in there and then put a boring bar in there is because what I'm doing is once I get the hole lined up, I'm locking my gibbs down so it doesn't move. And then I just bore each one of the holes uh, that way. That way I don't have to worry about it moving or anything. It, it takes a little bit more time, but that's just the way it goes. A little bit more work. As you can see here, I've kind of messed up. I, I couldn't remember which boring bar I used for the uh, recess for the six millimeter head. And it was actually a 3 8 inch boring bar set that I used to bar from, not the half inch. And so you can see here, that's why I'm changing out different boring bars. And I kind of got a, one of the holes is just, it's not gonna look right because of that, but it should be all right. It's, it's just the, an aesthetic thing. It doesn't really change the function of the hole at all. But I'm just going through processes here, boring all these uh, holes and uh, getting the recess. Now, when I put the boring bar in there, I'm setting the DRO each time and then going down about 30, let's see, 26 millimeters. 26 millimeters deep, uh, I need about a little over a quarter inch for the head of the bolt and about an inch, three quarters of an inch, let's say, for the shaft. So, 26 millimeters from the top. All right, so now that we have our three mounting holes board and counterboard, it's time to work on the pocket for the bearings. Uh, just the same process we went through uh, with the X and the Y axis. I'm just center drilling and then use a the drill bit uh, and I'm doing a through hole and I'm just progressively using bigger and bigger drill bits unfortunately the biggest drill bit I have is a half inch so once I get to a half inch I have to switch over to a boring bar started out with the boring bar just in the drill chuck and that gave me a little bit bigger than a half inch hole and then now you can see I'm changing out the drill chuck putting in my boring heads and putting the boring bar back in there and again I'm just kind of bore all the way through and then ever so slowly just increasing this to uh, until I get to 22 millimeter diameter, which is our through hole. And I'm turning the, turning the screw on the boring head about one turn each time. Uh, it's, it's not a really aggressive cut, but it's about more than I wanted to do. Um, through the whole process of building these mounts. I've, I've dulled one boring bar, maybe two, and I chipped, somehow I chipped carbide on one of them, which is my favorite one that I was using. So I didn't want to take too aggressive a cut here. So now that I've finished up the through hole here, looks pretty good now. I think this is the last pass here. Alright, so I'm doing the bearing pocket here now, and you can see I'm just barely taking a little bit 
And as I said before, uh, you, you will get a lot of opportunities to get this right because we're going to have that bearing cover sitting in there. And the bearing cover is going to allow you to just take a little pass and then check it. The, bar, the boring bar that I was using wasn't giving me a smooth finish, so I had to change it out here for this last pass. I wasn't really happy with it. Here I am, yeah, getting it set up. Wasn't happy with that boring bar either. It wasn't giving me a smooth finish. Like I said, I went, I doled out several boring bars through this whole process, so. Okay, here I am raising it up and like I said before just taking a little bit just going down just a little bit and then I'm going to check uh, to make sure that my bearing fits with the actual bearing even though you're measuring you still need to check it with the bearing and I'm only going down about three millimeters here because I know that the bearing cover is going to go down there so the bearing's not going to be actually in there so it doesn't really matter Looks like a bearing checked out. Looks like it was a good fit there. And so now I'm going all the way down uh, for the final sizing of the bearing brush. And this bearing pocket actually turned out really well. It's good. Thumbs up there. And, uh, you can see my little mistake here on the mounting hole. So thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.